spring has arrived in Vancouver. I'm on the SkyTrain to Main Street area. Now the SkyTrain is cruising through Burnaby into Vancouver now. The cherry blossoms are starting to decorate the city. Uh, this is the commercial drive area and getting closer to Main Street after taking a bus for 10 minutes. Here I am at Mount Pleasant District. This is such a beautiful spring site. The cherry tree blooming and the mural there in the far distance. I like the quote there, the present is a gift. And there's so many murals around this Mount Pleasant area. Here I am approaching Parallel 49 Cafe, Lucky Stonuts. I think this cafe is a collaboration of two businesses, uh, Parallel 49 Coffee and Lucky Stonuts. Around the street corner, we have a heritage church. Here I'm going in. Yeah, so it's a little busy here at this cafe, but pretty quiet. Most people are just sitting and working on their laptops. There's a huge range of selections of donuts, as you can see here. And uh, my favorite is actually this uh, plain sour donut. So these two gentlemen are really nice uh, sitting in front of me by the windows. I really want to capture them in my sketchbook art journal. So I'm always getting good models these days, feeling very lucky. So I started to do the contour outline of the man's face, uh, short hair, uh, very basic facial features, eyebrows, eyes looking to the right, the nose, and a gentle little smile. And his purple scarf wrapping around his neck, the shoulder, uh, upper arm, elbow, bending at a 45 degree angle, making small gestures, and his other shoulder, upper arm, and then continuing to draw his scarf on the chest area, the torso, and um, his other arm leaning onto the back of the bench, uh, the sleeve area with a bit of uh, texture, adding some inner details for his vest the stitching lines, uh, and also the stitching lines is really powerful, giving three-dimensionality to his body. And then I just drew the horizontal line for the back of the bench. Now I'm ready to draw his friend. So this is the profile view of this uh, gentleman here. I just drew the shape of his short hair, forehead, the nose, and the lips opening, uh, talking. One length of his glasses, and the leg of the glasses attached to the ear, finishing the chin area with a bit of beard, um, and then adding some small details for the other gentleman there. Uh, the collar, the curve of the back, and the upper arm, and the stitching lines on his uh, jacket. His elbow is also bending from this angle, extremely foreshortened. I cannot see his forearm. So yeah, just captured his uh, Pretty happy facial expression, talking to his friend. Okay, so now I'm finishing up the details behind the gentleman, the uh, three-dimensionality of the, the bench, the seat area, and the back of the bench. Some final little details on their faces. So now I'm going to take a break from drawing and uh, paint my donut and cup of latte first. So here are my Holbein water brushes, large and medium tips, uh, Mongjiu watercolors. It's a small palette containing about 12 half pan watercolors in it. I'm starting the first layer of wash. So both the donut and the latte are sharing the same first layer colors. Uh, this is very much diluted yellow ochre with a bit of lemon yellow. Now for the top of the donut's icing, I'm playing with a mix of um, orange and burnt sienna and using these intersecting lines to show the lattice. Uh, surface texture of the donut. Now some gradient is happening. This is a mix of more burnt sienna with orange for higher contrast. Wet into moist, there's a soft fuzzy blending happening creating a beautiful subtle effect of the donut's charming texture and colors. And just keep adding a little bit darker brown on the bottom edge and on the lattice texture surface, so there's an even higher contrast. And for the inside of the hole as well, not getting a lot of light. Yeah, so the inside of the hole is shaded in dark sepia, as well at the very bottom edge of the donut, away from the daylight. And now it's time to add more color contrast for the latte. So this is a mix of orange and burnt sienna. Uh, 
wet on dry and also using water to diffuse uh, the orange brown with the previous yellow. Okay, so now it's ready to uh, color the lovely little saucer and the ceramic cup. So I just mixed cerulean blue and lime green together, uh, watching for those highlights on the ceramic and just leave those stripes uh, pretty much perfect paper white. And the little spoon there using leftover gray to uh, quickly shade it. Okay, now it's time to shade and add shadow for the donut on the dish. So just using a leftover gray, super diluted to start with. A white dish is very rarely perfect paper white, so it's always lightly shaded with a mild brown for all white objects in the world. And then I just use more, actually a higher ratio of cerulean blue to shade uh, the teal colored cup and saucer. Uh, for the shadow, it's actually pretty open-ended. I like to use a bluish purplish gray. Uh, which is cobalt blue mixed with royal purple to uh, do most of my shadows and shaded areas. So blue and purple are also cold colors in very effective contrast with the warm colors of the donut and most pastry items and um, coffee and tea. So nice color combinations here. So just doing the shadow for the saucer and that's very much it. So their donut I think is probably the best ones in town. Their coffee is also deep and flavorful. After enjoying my donut and most of the coffee, I'm ready to uh, paint the benches that the, uh, the gentlemen are sitting on. So I started with yellow orange light wash and shade the bottom half with uh, brown and dark sepia. Uh, very loose diffusions of uh, two to three color values from yellow orange to dark sepia. And the, uh, the color values of the, uh, of the benches are echoing with the donut and the coffee, which is really nice to have. Now I'm ready to work on the, uh, the window frames. Uh, right behind uh, this gentleman here is the vertical window bar and the brick wall of the interior, drawing these horizontal lines and then these vertical lines to define the pieces of bricks. And I love uh, drawing and painting brick patterns. It's just always a very satisfying experience to fill an empty space of paper with this lovely pattern and the layers of uh, window frames and the vertical line defining another brick wall outside the window. And this, I just drew the, uh, the wooden structure supporting the bench, horizontal lines for the bricks outside and then these short vertical line segments. And now I'm ready to work on the urban scenery, the corner of the street outside the windows, starting with this heritage church. The very top, the steeple of the church is kind of like a, um, a kind of cone shape that I can see two triangles. The main body part of the church is kind of like a rectangular prism that I can see two sides of it. Uh, and then I see a roof on the right hand side. So that's the uh, prototype of this church building. And the bottom of this building defined by a close to straight horizontal line, uh, the windows um, on the steeple, and then the inner details for the main body part. The awning structure on the uh, ground level, probably the uh, one front entrance and one side entrance. Okay, now before these two gentlemen are gone, I wanna finish painting them first. So skin color, the base color is a mix of orange and red diluted with a lot of water. For the cheeks, it's a more concentrated, uh, higher ratio of red peachy color. Uh, same for the lips. So the person looks more lightly this way with uh, more vibrant colored cheeks. Uh, same for the neck a little bit of uh, yellow brown, uh, similar color scheme for this other gentleman's face. Uh, let's see, yellow ochre, orange, and red diluted with a lot of water for the very first layer. Second layer, the cheekbone and the forehead area, more brown and red. For the gray hair, I'm just grabbing some leftover uh, bluish gray diluted with a lot of water. For the scarf is royal purple mixed with magenta for the first layer. Shaded color is uh, royal purple with a bit of cobalt blue for a bit of three-dimensionality of the scarf. Okay, now it's time to have fun painting their outfits. They are uh, wearing dark blue outfits. 
vest sweaters. So I like to mix my own interesting blacks by mixing cobalt blue and royal purple and a bit of green together, three colors at different ratios. So I end up with bluish dark grays, purplish dark grays, and um, less water for this uh, next layer for the shaded area, especially on the arm. The human arm is a large cylinder and the top half is uh, facing the daylight, so it's brighter gray. The bottom half is shaded and same for uh, the vest area, the bottom part of the body and the pants is shaded heavily with a darker bluish gray. Yeah, so when you're shading anything, just really be aware of where the light source comes from. So in this case, there's a big window behind these two gentlemen and so the lower half of their bodies are uh, obviously more shaded than the upper half, closer to the window. And same for the bench area. The bottom half of the bench and the seat area of the bench is a really heavy dark sepia, so I'm just pushing for that. At the same time, pushing for the wooden grainy texture using these horizontal brush marks. Yeah, so the men are standing out from the bench even better and stronger. And they are still here. I think they're getting ready to leave now. And now I'm gonna to continue to draw the details of the church. So adding uh, the border for the left and right side. Oh, okay, here they came over and found out that I sketched them. They're really happy. <coughs> yeah. Nicely done in yeah. such a short time. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking to me. Yeah. All right, you take care. Yeah, so the two gentlemen took photos of their portraits and I share with them my YouTube channel and Instagram. And now they're gone. I'm continuing to sketch the uh, cityscape in front of me of the lovely Mount Pleasant area. So I'm gonna uh, just go ahead and fill in the windows, drawing the uh, special wrapping shapes around the windows and then the window bars inside the shape, filling in the small window panels with solid brown ink to get more sense of inner volume for the church by shading in some of the window panels with solid brown ink. And now moving on to the second floor window areas, uh, the uh, wrappings and the window panels, the uh, geometric designs in there, and then drawing these um, skinny window and door panels on the ground level. Yeah, so that's the essence of this uh, church building. Now just writing down the name of these two gentlemen, Mike and Cliff, and um, accentuating these uh, window frames. They're like black metallic, so I just use my uh, Sailor's Fountain Pen to shade them in with thicker lines and a large chunk of uh, dark brown, just so there's more weight in this sketch. Um, adding in these windows for the lower area of the church building. Yeah, so just summarize these small uh, areas very quickly. So three by three, there are nine windows here on this right wing of the church building. And um, that's very much it for all the details on this church. Now I'm ready to draw the streetscape right in front of me outside the window with a nice mix of urban structures, buildings, and foliage, starting with this foreground element, the, uh, the lamp and street sign post, and the name of the street, which is Main Street. Yeah, in the uh, east part of Vancouver. And now I'm ready to draw the tree on the corner of the street on the other side, starting with uh, these many large branches merging into the trunk. And then a stop sign, a car parked before the stop sign, contour outline, the windows and the wheels for the car, and that's it. Spreading these major branches out with minor branches and twigs forming the shape of the canopy. Yeah, so I really enjoy drawing uh, winter trees that are able to capture all of these branches and twigs. It's not overwhelming, but it's a really satisfying drawing experience. Now drawing the top of this uh, store beside the tree and more signs, the bottom of the building there, and then drawing the large display windows, the frames, and then the, uh, the intersecting metallic bars. I think this is like a, it says a luxury store, uh, selling expensive stuff, I guess. 
um, and then the contour outlines of the trees behind in the distance. Yeah, so as I always mention in my videos when I'm doing urban sketching, I always like to incorporate organic matters in my sketches rather than just dry concrete and glass buildings. Yeah, there are, there are always trees, bushes, and grass in my urban sketches. Uh, some smaller trees on the other side, uh, keeping the lines really loose and blurry. Some more details for that store there. Now it's time to paint again to bring out the uh, early spring atmosphere of Vancouver. So I just did a very quick um, yellow wash, diluted yellow ochre wash for most part of this uh, sketch. Now painting the overcast sky using leftover blue violet kind of gray over the super diluted yellow. So no matter how cloudy the sky is, there's always a bit of sun with a nice yellow tint shining through the dark gray clouds and the direction of the flow of these clouds are kind of tilting downwards towards the right. Uh, clouds in the sky, they're very rarely in, laid out in straight horizontal directions. Uh, most commonly, they are tilting a little bit in the sky, giving the sky uh, a much spacious and three-dimensional look. So I'm going to keep the sky fairly simple and um, but still sensational. Now it's time to paint the first layer for these evergreen trees using Viridian Green with a little bit of blue and burnt sienna into it. For the next layer is a more concentrated version of green. So when I'm painting from real life observations, I'm really breathing in the real air and um, in full contact with my environment. So now for the tree canopy, it's sprouting with fresh new leaves and the yellow green is not that saturated yet. It's kind of a muted yellow green. So I mix some um, yellow ochre with lime green and dilute it a little bit. And also mix in a bit of orange for the special tint of the tree's canopy as I observed today. And for the trunk and the branches, I used burnt sienna mixed with cobalt blue to paint it in simply. And for these distant trees, I'm just using leftover orange, yellow, green diluted to get that foggy effect. Keep painting on, enjoying the moment. Now it's time to paint the church building, starting with uh, using leftover gray to paint the steeple. And just adding some a little polish for the wooden bar here that I forgot. Just some more orange brown and um, yeah, sepia there. Okay, now just uh, putting a diluted uh, yellow orange for the windows of the store there because there's indoor lighting behind the glass windows. Uh, orange brown for the first layer of the bricks. These bricks outside uh, has a darker brown. So really enjoying punching these juicy colors in. Every brush mark is a slight different color value of brown, orange brown. Now, second layer, a bit more intense, uh, just pretty much pu pure burnt sienna. To make the burnt sienna or brown even darker, I mix in uh, cobalt blue for more variety of shades of brown. So if we look very carefully, Every single brick has a unique shape and color tone. So that's what I love about brick walls. And that's very much it for the bricks. I capture their essence. Now it's time to move on to add more contrast or shade for this church building. So the sun, I believe it was on the left. So the right side of this church building include the right side of the steeple and this right wing area is shaded. So I just use some leftover bluish gray to, to glaze it over uh, the yellowish wash that I did before. On the right half of this church building, clean my brush and paint uh, the bright teal colors. Uh, another layer of gray on the right side of the uh, exterior of the building. So it, it looked even more three-dimensional shading for buildings. Yeah, anything in the world is very important. Okay, now it's time to intensify the exterior of, the, of this luxury store 
was bluish gray, cobalt blue mixed with royal purple, and then another layer of dark sepia for the trees, trunk, and branches. And final polish here and there, painting the uh, lamp post with a bluish gray, a very rarely used black. I think for the street sign, I just use black because there are a lot of, uh, of grays, bluish grays already. And the awning using a leftover muted teal, and that's very much it. Here's the look of my finished sketch. It took me a little less than two hours on location. And I'm so thankful for Mike and Cliff being my model today. Thank you so much. And also thank you to my audience for watching this video. If you like this video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I try to update my channel with two fresh new videos every week. And again, this interior of this cafe is very spacious. Time to go home on the bus. See you next time, everyone. Enjoy your day.